Kobela, Ligai, I am Jessalyn, and today we will dive into a bunch of exciting updates in Chrome 116 and 7. First up, great news! Now you can mock API responses with the DevTools overrides feature. Let's see how this can help us prototype faster. There should be a list of coffees on this page, but the backend API isn't ready yet. Let's mock it with the network panel. First, Right-click on the request and select Override Content. If this is your first time overriding, you must set up a local folder to store the content locally. Cool! Now you can edit the content in DevTools or with your favorite IDE. Paste in the coffee list, save it, and refresh the page. Bam! You can test your UI without waiting for the backend changes. By the way, you can also override HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You can easily spot the overridden request with the purple icon. Click on this request to see exactly which part of the request are overridden. Next, you can see a more peaceful console and network panel. DevTools hides the warnings and requests from Chrome extensions. You might have seen these source map warnings before. Many of you find it not actionable. Therefore, we remove them from the console. You can still access these warnings through the Developer Resources tab. We also show a warning in the related source file when you expand it. Furthermore, in the Network Panel, you have an option to hide the Chrome extension's URLs. No more manually filtering it out with the Scheme filter. A few subtle enhancements have been made to the Sources panel to assist you in locating your code quicker. DevTool now automatically display the file in the sidebar as soon as you navigate to it, saving you the effort of searching for it. Additionally, you have the option to right-click and review it manually. Furthermore, code folding is enabled by default. You can click on the arrow to collapse or expand sections. This is particularly useful for lengthy files. If these modifications are not to your liking, you have the option to disable them in the setting. Next, a couple of new additions to the CSS. You can click and drag to update the linear timing function. In the South pane, find the animation timing function and open the easing editor. Click anywhere on the line to add a control point. Then, you can drag the point to change the animation progress. You can also double-click a point to remove it. Next, have you started using CSS nesting yet? Well, it is great. It makes the code more readable. In the Styles pane, you can view the entire selector chain. As you can see, the parent selectors are grayed out. Debugging missing style sheets was made easy as well. The console points you to the exact line the style sheet that failed to load. Click on the error icon to find more actionable information in the Issues tab. Next, you can inspect the fetch priority in both Network and Performance panel. The fetch priority can help optimize the core web vitals of your page. Use it to give hints to the browser on relative priority of the resources. Here are a few examples of setting the fetch priority in HTML and JavaScript. Open the performance trace and select a resource. You can inspect the resource's fetch priority changes with the initial and final priority fields. Similarly, you can view both of these priorities in the network panel. Remember, you need to enable the big request row setting. Pre-render can make next page navigations faster. Do you know you can define pre-render URLs with the Speculation Rules API? Not only that, you can use DevTools to debug them. In this example, I define a rule to pre-render three URLs ahead of time. However, I have only two links on the page and the third URL doesn't actually exist. There are a few ways to check if the future pages are pre-rendered successfully. In the Application panel, scroll down to the Speculation Rules to get an overview of the rule set status. To know the status of each URL, click to navigate to view their preload status. From here, we can find out why the third URL failed to load. OK. Since the first link pre-rendered successfully, I expect it to open instantly when I click on it. Wow, it did. If I open the This Page pane, it shows me the current page was pre-rendered successfully. If I refresh the page, 
then the pre-render status is gone. Go to this link to learn more on this topic. Finally, time for a bonus tip. The third-party cookies are phasing out soon. You can launch Chrome in the command line with this flag to test how the browser behaves after the phase out. Not only that, the Issues tab also shows you warnings on the future deprecations with a link to guide you for the preparation. All right, that's all for today. Check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Ciao.